This week on Life in the Carolinas, it's more than just a baseball game. It's a celebration of patriotism, heroism, and American values. It's a chance to honor those who have served with valor and pass the torch to a new generation. It's all about the American Legion World Series on this episode of Life in the Carolinas. <laughs> Life in the Carolinas is brought to you in part by the Cleveland Community College Foundation, celebrating Cleveland Community College's 50th anniversary. Life in the Carolinas is brought to you in HD by Hampton Inn & Suites at Phillips Place. It's one of the biggest events in baseball. Each year, over 100,000 fans gather here in Shelby, North Carolina to witness the culmination of excellence known as the American Legion World Series. Only one team from each of the eight regions gets to come here, and the competition is strong. We've had a lot of these teams from around the nation, all here proudly representing their region. And well, one of them's gonna take home the national championship. When you qualified to come here, what was it like? We were just excited just to even like have the opportunity just to play in a regional, um, let alone winning the regional, yeah. then going to the World Series. Big thing to take in right now, and I yeah. just can't wait to play tomorrow. Your head kind of still spinning oh, around yeah. it all? Just, I just want to get on the field. A surreal feeling coming from behind, you know. Yeah. We lost the first game of the tournament, but after what the boys did last year, we, we knew we could do it. It hasn't sunk in that we're actually going to be playing it's in the World dream. Series. Yeah. How are people treating you here in the Carolinas? Wonderful. Yeah? Food been good? Yeah. Food's always good down here. A little kid just ran up to me and asked for my autograph. Not, I mean, I just graduated high school. I didn't think I'd be getting an autograph sign. <laughs> it's an event that's been going on for decades, and it's never been bigger. Community service has always been a core value of the American Legion. In 1925, this commitment was further to include a youth baseball program. Just one year later, in 1926, the first American Legion World Series was held. And since then, thousands of young Americans have participated in the program. For most of its history, the series has been held in different cities each year. But in 2011, Shelby, North Carolina became the permanent home for the American Legion World Series. Today, it's a centerpiece for a variety of events and celebrations, which the Legion uses to further its core mission, starting with this exclusive pre-game event. Hey, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? Good to see you. Hey, girl. The American Legion World Series is a special event. People come from all over the nation, and this is the Commander's Reception. It's a very special event. It's by ticket only. Well, we're gonna step in and see what's going on. Only people specifically invited by the American Legion World Series Executive Committee can obtain these tickets. Guests include the National Commander and National Office dignitaries, key sponsors, elected officials, and core volunteers. It gives us an opportunity to thank those Legionnaires, those veterans who have done so much to keep this program going. From a personal standpoint, what's this mean for you? Well, it's, uh, it's really hard to put it in words because there's so much sweat has gone into it, not only by me, but a lot of the volunteers who have been involved, so you see this tonight, and it makes it all worthwhile. But none of this happens without the efforts of countless volunteers working behind the scenes. So much has to go right for the American Legion World Series to work, and you won't believe how many people volunteer their time to make it all happen. So how long have you been volunteering, sir? Since 2001. What are your normal duties? I work with the manpower division, and that includes the golf carts and tractors, bring okay. the people from the parking lot into the stadium, okay. the ticket sellers and the ticket booth, and the souvenir stand. How many volunteers in total? Probably between five and 600 total. I called to see if I could volunteer and said I'll do anything. Uh, that does not involve scraping up chewing gum off the bleachers. <laughs> we have people that'll work one four-hour shift, yeah. 
and we have people that want to stay the entire series. I help uh, line up the color guard for the games. Child of a career Navy man, so I've always felt fondly about the military. Yeah. This is my third year and I love it. I love it. I'll come back next year if they'll have me. How many days have you volunteered so far? I was on for three, so okay. this is my first day. Okay, okay, okay got two more days. I'm um, volunteering all day. So. All day? All day, every day. All day, every day. <laughs> She's our teacher. Ah, you're the teacher. Oh. 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 Hey, so was this a class thing? Yes. Okay, now, yes. I, now we have a story. Okay. Yes. And holy stolen bases, how could we forget these crucial sidekicks, the young heroes of the games known as Bat Boys, and of course, Bat Girls. Is it a lot of work? Yeah. yeah. You gotta get the balls and yeah. stuff, make sure they're okay, because sometimes yeah. they're like beat up. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you this, are your buddies being out at school, buddies you have, are they jealous? Yeah, they, they always ask me if I can have a ball. Yeah. <laughs> what do you tell them? No. No. <laughs> Whether it's a ball game or defending our nation, the American Legion appreciates all those who serve. The Congressional Medal of Honor Society. Not many people in the world get to wear that shirt. When we come back, amazing stories of heroism from some of our veterans at the American Legion World Series. It's hard to overstate the magnitude of the American Legion World Series. It's an enormous event, requiring the efforts of countless volunteers. But it's not just about a game of baseball. The American Legion uses the games as a showcase for tributes to both our nation and those who serve. Even something simple as bringing in the ball to start the game comes wrapped in a display of patriotism that's literally sky high. Let me get my thoughts a minute, make sure I get everything going here. John Brooks spent 30 years serving in the U.S. military, but right now, he's responsible for making sure conditions are right for a group of parachuters. I was a helicopter crew chief in the Marine Corps. Do you ever jump? Never jump. Never, never jump. Want, never wanted to jump. <laughs> Why, Why jump out of a perfectly, perfectly good, good helicopter? Yeah. That's right. John, is that our guy? That's our guy. Members of the Special Forces Association jump team out of Fort Bragg would ascend into the stadium, bringing with them both the game ball and a majestic display of old Glory herself. Green Beret Air, the Green Beret Ground. LZ is hot and you can exit the aircraft at any time, over. And with that word from John, they're off. Mario! Look at that. Woo-ha! So here the guys are, they're coming out of the sky now. The precision is absolutely amazing. Brenda Gatter worked for the Army for 14 years. Both she and her husband continue to serve wow, as part of the jump team. Is every jump just as exciting as the other? Yes. Yeah. How many of these jumps have you done? 2010. 2010. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, why do you keep doing that? Because it's fun and because of the people. Yeah. And because we're representing our country. I work for the Special Warfare Training Group at Fort Bragg. This is our job to give back. It is so sacred to me and it's an honor. Every time I unfurl that flag, I get goosebumps. The ball was ceremoniously handed off to Brigadier General Kenneth Allen Beer, who threw out the pitch to start the game. But not all the displays were inside the stadium. The North Carolina National Guard teamed up with the American Legion to help the public better understand both their history and their mission. We started out as a volunteer force, but we have a dual mission. We work for the governor during peacetime for things like state disasters uh -huh. or state emergencies. Are you a baseball fan? I am a baseball yeah. fan. It's one of the things I think that just embodies what America's yeah. all about. It teaches all the things that really are enforced by the National Guard. One thing I want to make sure you understand is we've got a number of volunteers 
who have previously served and are now retired who have helped organize these, these events. John Brooks is one of them. The truly lifelong dedication of so many members is one of the hallmarks of both the National Guard and the American Legion. Al Mantinelli served in World War II. Now over 92 years old, he's been an active member for the American Legion for over 71 years. He probably takes some inspiration from his big brother. <laughs> he's 103. 103? Yes. <laughs> he's a barber and he's still working six days a week. His distinguished service during World War II has been recognized not only by his own country, but also by the French government. On July the 11th, 2014, Al Mancinelli was awarded the French Legion of Honor, their highest award. So, so this honor that you receive from the French government is, is, is the highest honor that they can give, right? That's true. There's so many others to be thanked. Yeah amongst us. Yeah. 92 years old, still proud of America. Absolutely. Still proud of your brothers in arms here. I have to do it again, I'll do it again. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Well, we know, let's see, your brother's 103, so uh, I guess if they need you in Afghanistan, you could take <laughs> off for a few years. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Bruce P. Crandall could be considered a youngster compared to Al Manzanelli, but he's more than distinguished himself though not recently at baseball. Did well, you play yeah. Legion ball? No, I played semi-pro. I had great hand-eye coordination. Uh -huh. That made it great for me as a, as a pilot. It's been said that Bruce had dreams of being drafted by the New York Yankees, but ended up being drafted by the U.S. Army, where his special skills resulted in the saving of many lives. The Congressional Medal of Honor Society, what does that mean? Well, it means that you are wearing it for others. Uh, we would do it all again, and we would expect right. you to do the same thing if you were in our position. Yeah. So it's not a case of you doing something to get the medal. The medal comes to you. So tell me what happened on that day. You see the movie, We Were Soldiers? Yeah. OK, that, that's, uh, Craig Kinnear played me in that. We carried in ammo, water, medical supplies, and took out wounded. I'd get into another aircraft, and I'd go, and then I'd come back and you put duct tape over the holes so you'd know when the new ones were. All happened in that one long day. Fourteen and a half hours in a helicopter is unheard of. Wow, you guys did it. what a story. What a life. On February the 26th, 2007, Colonel Bruce P. Crandall was awarded the Medal of Honor by President George W. Bush. Growing up, Bruce was a gifted athlete and a bit of a handful. A teacher once observed that he had, quote, a unique ability to get into trouble and out of trouble without any trouble at all. Part of the ceremonies, Colonel Crandall swore in new members of the North Carolina National Guard. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution. The service exemplified by the participants of the American Legion World Series is not merely a thing of the past. It remains a principle, a torch that will continue to burn brightly as it is passed along to future generations. When we come back, who will take home the title? We'll take you behind the scenes for the final face-off. Keter Stadium, the final game on the final day of the American Legion World Series here in Shelby, North Carolina. Equipment is checked and laid out as volunteers prepare the field for the ultimate match in this competition. With a trophy to be won, it comes down to two remaining teams. Swing and a miss, strike three. New Jersey is back. Last year's series champions, Brooklawn, New Jersey, defeated a very tough Waiipahu Hawaii team in the semifinals and will square off against Midland, Michigan, who won a close game against Omaha, Nebraska. 
If New Jersey wins, it will be the first time in 40 years that any team has won two consecutive World Series. What team are you rooting for? Um, all of them, actually. The whole bunch of them? Yes. <laughs> Our son's down there always getting his autographs. Uh, he's got eight baseballs. He has eight baseballs? Eight. eight. All the player signatures from each team. Wow. So he does that every year? Every year. So you got Nebraska? Yeah. Did you do it last year as well? Yes. So you got eight last year too? Yeah. You got 16 now. Wow. That's incredible. Even Freedom the Eagle, the mascot of USA Baseball, had his job to do, entertaining the crowd as the final preparations were made. Dale Earnhardt Jr., famed driver of the National Guard NASCAR vehicle, was on hand to show his support. The National Guard is a huge supporter of the American League and World Series. They're a great partner of ours. I've enjoyed being a, a friend of theirs for a very long time. So I want to thank them for having me here. Good luck to both teams, New Jersey and Michigan. And uh, let's play some ball. Thank you. And that means cue the National Anthem. For this final game, the Legion reached out to retired Navy veteran and celebrated singer Wayne Taylor. American Legion National Commander Dan Dillinger had a visit with Wayne before his performance. Are you a member of our organization? I got recruited earlier. <laughs> what a big guy named Dan. <laughs> oh, say. Tonight's colors, the Joint Service Color Guard, and singing the National Anthem, U.S. Navy veteran Wayne Taylor, who was a member of the Navy Band Country Current. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed. There are few things more American than baseball. The pageantry associated with the game especially the singing of the national anthem is never more moving than when we gather with veterans and service people to recognize the greatness of our nation. And the home of the brave. Wow. Dan Dillinger threw out the ceremonial first pitch for the final game. Ceremonial first pitch is the National Commander of the American Legion. And at last, it's about time to play ball. The first game begins as Brooklawn's pitcher throws a called strike on the outside corner. And we're underway. These two teams played Saturday night. That was a fantastic game. Well, it's time to check in with our friends here at the Press Box. You know, these guys are the ones that make all the magic happen when it comes to bringing us a great show. Let's go see what they're doing. You've been producing this how long? Gosh, yeah, since the early days of the regionals. Wow. Uh, and then, of course, four years with the American Legion World Series as wow. the permanent home. How many people does it take to make all this happen behind the Gosh, scenes? We've got 20, 25 people in and out. It's a small army. Back on the field, defending champion Brooklawn, New Jersey has jumped out to an early lead against Midland, Michigan. In an audacious move, Brooklawn makes a bid to steal home and does it. Wow, he's really excited. That's the kind of excitement that Eddie Holbrook was hoping for when he spearheaded the community effort to bring the World Series to Shelby. Well, Eddie, You've done it again. Well, I think it's a great testament to the community and the support that they've given to this event. Um, so when do you start planning next year? Probably about the 1st of September. <laughs> so just a few days from yeah. now. What was one of those moments for Eddie Holbrook that just made you smile and such? Oh, that was nice. When I got the moment when I walked out the press box door and looked to see hundreds of people standing on the concourse just having a good time mm -hmm. and all the seats filled. As the game played out, Brooklawn coach Steve Mondial watched his team take a commanding lead. And in the final inning, 
A last catch. It's all over. New Jersey has won the American Legion World Series again. That's one big pile of happiness on the field. The first and second place trophies are brought onto the field, one for each of the two teams in recognition of the honor they have achieved. And we're going to crown Brooke Lawn a champion for the second straight year. Win or lose, they're all winners. They've gotten this far. There have been champions of their state, their regions, and now they're here. For the winning team, words can barely describe their elation. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. I love it. it. Hasn't set in yet. I was actually a bat boy last year when they won, too. So You were a bat boy with the same team last year? Yes, sir. You can't describe the feeling. We came back from last year, first time in 40 years that somebody repeated. So. You know, that's a tough task when you got a bullseye on your back and everybody is out to get you after last year's win. And, and uh, it's a credit to these kids who just kept battling. It's been a tremendous experience every year we've been here, and this doesn't get old. <laughs> so you're looking forward to coming back next why year? Why not? Yeah, why not? Nobody's ever done three in a row, so we're going to give that a shot. For nearly nine decades, the American Legion has crowned a champion of the American Legion World Series. <laughs> well, they've just done it again. And one year from now, they'll do it again right here in Shelby, North Carolina.